I'm Lyme Macedo. Macedo. It's me and you from LyMacedo.com. And it was Lyme Macedo. Today, the date is uh, 29 February 2016. Time right now is 6 in the evening, 6.01. Okay, I, I just want to share with you uh, what I feel is one of the biggest problems in the UAE, uh, uh, UAE market. Okay? And this is just my opinion. I, I don't know. May, maybe you have a different opinion. I'd love to hear your opinion. Now, uh, I have. Uh, I was born... Uh, I was, you know, born and raised in UAE. I've been here for literally uh, my whole life. I've seen UAE when it was just a desert and, uh, you know, driving from Sarjah to Dubai, which today takes, in traffic, takes around one and a half hour at times, used to take uh, seven minutes those days. In fact, it used to take even three minutes. I was there when you uh, people paid two dirhams for driving from a cab from uh, Dubai to Sarjah or Sarjah to Dubai, sharing. And uh, I think five dirhams uh, or seven dirhams for uh, come, uh, you know booking a cab, uh, cab privately. Today it's around you know forty-five to fifty dirhams. So I've been in uh, UAE for a rather long time, and uh, the one thing that I've noticed, which is a major problem in UAE, one is the increasing rents. I, I think it's I, I I just don't know on what what sense or what logic or. By by what standards do these rents keep increasing the way they are increasing? It's it's absolutely shocking. I mean, um, you know, I, I uh, when when I was young, the rents, uh, you know, landlords used to keep inviting people and say, please come and stay in you know my building, and they were really nice. And uh, you know, those days it used to be two thousand dirhams for a year. Seriously, two thousand dirhams for a year, and then it raised to seven thousand dirhams. Today, I mean. Uh, the rents are something like 120,000 dirhams in Abu Dhabi for even a, a studio apartment, which is ridiculous. I mean, imagine 10 years, you're paying 1.2 million dirhams, okay? And another problem is not just the rents, the way it is increasing every year. Every year, there is an unbelievable increase. Like my rent in Saja for a one-bedroom apartment increased from 24,000. It was 24? Yeah, 24,000. Yeah, 24,000 dirhams. Now it's, uh, sorry, 27,000, yeah, that's what I was thinking, 27,000. Today it is 45,000. 27,000, but it's 45,000. It's it's nearly double, you know, it, 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 it just doesn't make sense. So how can you increase rents like this? Where would we go? Um, uh, you, you know, so that is one. Uh, and the salaries and, you know, the income that we're getting doesn't match the expenses that we have. Then obviously we had the Salik, we had the... Uh, parking uh, fees, okay, fine, agreed. all this is required for the benefit of the economy because, yes, we're getting a lot of benefits, so, yeah, we have to pay for these expenses. But the second problem, which I feel, uh, one is apart from the rents, the second problem is the, um, the, the, the way the banks are giving credit, the way the banks are just giving, okay, take this credit card for free, free for life, take this loan, no extra cost. They don't even review people's ability to pay back just imagine, I know of some people who have literally <coughs> spent, I had this lady who called me up, she earns, uh, she has lost a job, she only was earning 20,000 rupees, and she has literally spent more than 1 million on credit cards. And I, when I was shocked, I was like, you actually spent 1 million on your credit cards, are you crazy? And then she said, well, it was much more crazier before. I said, how much did you spend before? She had spent nearly 10 million. How can you spend 10 million on a credit card? And uh, she apparently she was, uh, she is still a compulsive gambler. So I was like, this is crazy. Okay, just imagine so many people like her who have loans. What are they going to do? How are they going to pay back? So that is the second problem that I see. The third problem that I see is, okay, they, they give credit, they give all this cash. The third problem that I see is the way these, uh, these companies are, marketing this concept of sale you know there is a brand called peer cardin okay i don't know if you know this brand but this brand wherever you see you know when i used to see in roller there was a shop peer cardin originals okay peer cardin was the name and they were giving like uh 45 percent off then it went to 75 percent off and then they started advertising 95 percent off 95 how you know, I, I was thinking to myself, how the hell do you have 95% off or 90% off? So something is like 3,000 dirhams is a suit and they put X and it's 300 dirhams. So I was like, wow. So is that the kind of margins that you put 90 or 100% margin? Wow. 
Okay, fine. If that was not good enough, then they had a clearance sale. Clearance. Clearance means you're going to close down the shop. Now, what is so shocking about it? Not the fact that they give 95%, although it is shocking. The shocking fact is this shop was on clearance or was shutting down. Clearance means you're shutting down the shop. It was on a clearance sale for the last seven to eight years. Seriously. For the last seven to eight years, they have been having a clearance sale. Apparently, they never cleared all this stuff off for eight years. And now if you go, you'll still see Pier Garden having a 90% sale. And if that was not stupid, now everybody is following the same strategy. Buy one, get three free. I've actually seen this. Buy one, get three free. Um, i seen somewhere in Dera. Uh, one suit you buy, you get three suits free. Or whatever you buy. One, you get three free. I've also seen... Now, all the brands are following suit. Even uh, even uh, Landmark Group, uh, Splash is following this. Um, you have all these other brands. Everyone's following 25 to 75% off. So people are like, wow, 25 to 75% off. I better buy it before I lose this opportunity. So people are buying more than what they need. And now people have realized that everyone, everyone is following the same strategy. 25 to 75% off year round. They have the... Uh, you, you know, uh, they have a summer sale, winter sale, autumn sale, back to school sale, uh, pre DSF Dubai Shopping Festival sale, uh, Dubai Shopping Festival sale, post uh, Dubai Shopping Festival sale. Then uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. It's every every month there is a sale. Okay, that that's another one. Another problem that UAE is facing right now is the the number of shopping festivals that are there. There is Dubai Shopping Festival. There is Dubai Summer Festival, uh, Summer Surprise. There is Jitex. Before there was only one Jitex. Now there are two Jitex where everyone's trying to put in all the stuff for sales here. So, you know, th th that I, I don't know if that is adding value to the economy or, uh, or people are just spending, spending, spending and putting themselves in debt. And the, the fourth, uh, the fourth, I think fourth, yeah, fourth problem that I see is the, the products that are being sold. Now, I have been, you know, I've taken part in Jitex two or, uh, not two or three, what am I saying? Seven or eight times I've taken part in Jitex. Um, there was, there are, initially when Jitex started, it was actually a technology festival, okay? Now when you see Jitex, it's, it's kind of crazy because the the products that are being sold, I mean, the, it's, it's shocking. I have seen big brands, and I'm not joking, I've seen really big brands like, Intel. Intel is a big brand. Oppo is uh, is a new uh, upcoming brand. Uh, I've seen Swift. I've seen uh, uh, Intex. I've seen all these guys. They are selling the the stuff that they are selling is 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 like buy one get one free uh, or ten pieces buy now limited stock. Now what's the problem here? If you actually research the price of this product, the products that they're selling are mostly outdated technology. Like, you know, in, in Intel, Intel, uh, when they had this uh, sale, what they did was they mentioned uh, uh, this this particular laptop was 1,300 dirhams or 1,200 dirhams. So I was, you know, I was kind of tempted to buy because they said only 10 more pieces. And they even had buy one laptop, get one laptop for free. So I, I was about to buy when this guy, he was part of my you know, social media, I asked him, listen man, is this worth buying? The guy told me, don't buy it. And I was like, why? He's saying the actual cost for this is around 600 or 700 bucks. I said, how do you know this? He's saying, because I, I know I was the one who, you know, had them in the pricing. I was like, oh, okay. So something that's 700 bucks. Then I asked him, then these, they are putting up the price like 5,000 dirhams X, 1,200. So isn't that, uh, you know, wrong? He said, no, technically that is right. I said, how do you mean? What do you mean by that? So he said, when this laptop came out around two or three years ago, or four years ago, whatever, it was 5,000 dirhams. Today, it's outdated. Today, nobody wants to buy it. It's, it's price, you can get it for 700 dirhams. And now they are selling for double the price so they can cover their money. Now, you might feel that this is wrong for the people who are doing this Jitex. Well... If you actually look at the fact that they are paying, they are paying hundreds of thousands of dirhams, uh, you know, so much of money to, you know, set up a stand over there. Obviously, they need to cover up their costs. Like I'll tell you, some uh, like when I work for Intex, they spend nearly a million dirhams just to have their stand, just to pay for their staff, 
to get the merchandise, all the stuff. And just imagine, after you get all the merchandise shipped and bought there, it's a loss to take it back. So most of these companies, what they're doing, they're trying to get rid of the old stock. Now, it's, it's a two-way thing. On one hand, they're giving you old stock, so you get some benefit. Uh, but having said that, the other side, the flip side to this is um, you can get much better deals outside. Seriously, you can get much better deals. You want proof? Go to Lulu. Lulu is, uh, uh, you know, these hypermarket stores run by this Indian guy, okay? Uh, what's his name? Yusuf Ali, okay? Now, if you want to bring in anything in uh, Lulu, you need, uh, seriously, you need to bend over backwards and listen to them because they they are like uh, a monopoly in, in terms of supermarkets, okay? They are major, major, major. So if you act funny with them, they'll tell you, get lost, fuck off, and then finished, you're nowhere, you know? So you have to agree to their terms and conditions. And their terms and conditions are, you either give it for free or you give it at a throwaway price or only we should have an exclusive offer which, uh, you know, nobody else has. So with that that is what makes Lulu so, uh, so amazing. That's why even though Lulu does not take part in Jitex or any other of these places, they are able to cut down their costs so remarkably low. I'll tell you, uh, you, you get a lot of special offers there. So now instead of Jitex, I'll tell you, Carrefour and uh, Lulu, they really compete neck to neck, even Nesto, to give you much more cheaper prices. So uh, I, I feel that number four, this is another problem. The number of sales that are there and the other thing is these misleading ads which are there. I mean, I, mean, I, I really feel... That they, they're really taking people for a ride because how can you have 90% off? Seriously, how can you have 90%? And these products that are being sold, you're selling outdated products and people lose faith in you. And then after that, you know, you can fool them once, you can fool them twice. You cannot fool them forever. And, uh, you know, as for me, to tell you honestly, what I do is whenever I want to go and purchase something, I, I check what the product is, I find out what the price is, and I pay attention every month to figure out when is the sale coming because... They always do have a sale. Like, for example, at Adventure HQ, um, I, I wanted to buy, you know, a couple of uh, running, uh, you know, I, I wanted to buy running gear, a couple of things that, that were there. And I kept an eye on them. And then I found out one fine day when I was just passing by, I found out that they had the sale where you could buy at 75 or 40 to 75 percent off and buy two, get one free. And I was like, this is an amazing deal. And I ended up buying a lot of things. So what I'm trying to tell you is, uh, you know, uh, this also can be a problem with people spending more or being misled. Last, if not the least, uh, I would say the biggest problem that uh, people are facing in the UAE is, uh, you, you know, the, the very fact that when you take on a visa, okay, you are under the mercy of the guy who is providing you the job. Now, it's a catch-22 situation, to, to be honest with you. On one hand, it is, it is um, you know, if a guy takes a visa, he will not change the job. He will not change the job because obviously you need a visa to survive in the country. Uh, however, on the other hand, I, I, I feel you will not attract talent, a talent pool coming to this country because the reason being is, you know, if you're back uh, in your own country, what happens is uh, you can leave any job you don't want. If the guy treats you unfair, you can just leave. You can go apply for a job somewhere else. But here what happens is once you take a visa, you can't leave the place till you finish the contract. So really talented people don't want to work under someone in these conditions. So it's very hard to attract talent. So I, I just feel that maybe, uh, you know, you need to have uh, an open system where people can, uh, you know, just look out for different jobs. So that will force the employees to really take care of the employees. And that will give people much better opportunity to, you know, if they are treated well, they will really work. And then talent will come down here and they would want to work because they know that if the guy treats me bad, I can leave and go. So uh, I feel that would add much more value. And uh, yeah, uh, obviously in terms of working visa, I wish, really wish that this country would offer citizenship. There are so many people who spend their lifetime here. Like I've spent at least you know, 35 plus years in this country. Uh, this I consider this country my home. Uh, even though I have an Indian passport, I, you know, I, I don't feel anything for India. Seriously, because I've been here. Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't feel anything. It's, uh, when I go to India, it's just like going for a vacation somewhere, you know. So, having been born and brought up uh, in this country for so many years, I really wish they would offer citizenship, um, you know, for all. There's so many people who love this country so very much and don't want to go back. So, it's it's kind of sad that, you know, when you don't have a job anymore or when you're, uh, when you're not able to work, 
in in the prime of your life, and not in the prime, in the in the autumn or the winter of your life, and you're completely useless. You're supposed to leave the country, and uh, that kind of breaks your heart because you have had so many memories here, so many uh, moments of your life. So yeah, I, I I just wish, and I hope that they would change this rule and you know keep so many people who have spent their years here <coughs> to continue being here. So yeah, these are the problems that I feel uh, are the big problems here in UAE. Uh, and, you know, I'm just sharing uh, my views, and uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you have a different opinion. I'd love to hear your views, all of, you know, because I just feel the more uh, uh, the more we can do and contribute to the country, I think the more better it will be for all of us. So, live from livemasida.com and livemasida.com. Just sharing with you his view, his opinion. I'd love to hear from you. Whatever you have to say. Goodbye for now.